No, stay where you are. Do not break the stillness of this moment. For this is a time of mystery. A time when imagination is free and moves forward swiftly, silently. This is the haunting hour. Sybil Wells' gray head lies wearily on her pillow. Her eyelids are closed, as if it were too great an effort to lift them. She can hear Dr. Adams and her nurse talking, but they seem distant, remote, much farther away than the thoughts in her own brain. She'll be all right now, nurse. Just give her this every hour. Very well, Dr. Adams. It's amazing she's pulled through, isn't it? I've been ill. Very ill. For how long, I could not even guess. It was a close call, but then she's always had a good constitution. I've known her for many years. Since I was 20. Since before... Before it happened to Father... No, it's not her physical health that worries me. She's always been high-strung, nervous, like her father was. Before, well, I suppose you know. Not my physical health. What does he mean? Why must he tell her that father died in an insane asylum? Poor Mr. Courtney. His family had to commit him. Mad as a March hare, of course. But each time I'd visit his cell, he'd plead that he was staying. Yes, he'd plead he was staying. And his eyes would be wild and desperate. And dead of hope. Sybil, I'm not mad. You're the only one who loves me. Who cares if I live or die? Please, make the doctor understand... I've been railroaded here, Sybil, because I had money and they wanted it. Oh, Daddy, I I have to go now. You don't believe me. You don't believe me either. Oh, of course I do. No. Oh, Lord, if you could only know how it feels to live among these dead and be considered one. Oh, Daddy, please, please. I, I must go now. Goodbye. Oh, Sybil... Sir, I swear, I'm sane. Sir, I'm sane. I swear. Tragic case. Well, I'll drop in tomorrow to see how she's doing. Madness. The horror of vacuum. I guess I'd always feared it. I was sitting up in bed now. Except for the weakness, I could hardly recall that I'd been ill. Good morning, Nurse Kern. Good morning, Mrs. Wells. I'll take that breakfast tray. And I think you're well enough to have the morning paper, if you wish. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, I haven't seen one for weeks. I settled back against the pillows and began to read. Earthquake... Followed by fire was yesterday for 33 miles along the shore. 14 people were many more injured. Authorities have the damage $4 million. It didn't make sense. I read another sentence and then a different article. What was wrong with me? Oh, of course, of course. My eyes. I've been ill for so long. That's all it was. Nurse! Mrs. Curran! Mrs. Nurse, will you please read this newspaper to me? Oh, of course. Is, is anything wrong? You look so... Oh, no, no, no. Everything's fine. It's just... just my eyes. I see. Well, what shall I read? This... this one. Earthquake followed by fire was yesterday for 33 miles. She read on. Her face was grave and slightly bored. 
She showed no surprise, no puzzlement. The words made sense to her. It was only I who couldn't understand them. Only I to whom they were a senseless jumble. People, they Stop it! Stop it! I mean... Uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to hear any more. Please, please, just, just leave me alone, Nurse Curran. But Mrs. Wells... Leave me alone, I tell you, leave me alone! That was the first discrepancy in my mind. I don't know how long I've been hearing the music. It has seemed all part of a dream. But then it began to unnerve me. It became frenzied and hating and evil. It sounded like all the demons of hell and the things of the night were after me. Make it stop! Make it go away! Please! 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 Well, what's the matter? Of course, it's all right now. It's all right. The music's gone away. What music? What music? For a few days after that, it didn't bother me. Not till early one evening. I'd run for Nurse Curran twice. Where was she? I was very angry. I got out of bed and went across the room to the door. Mrs. Curran! She was walking down the hall, her back toward me. And she had my little daughter by the hand. Elsie, my baby. Her sailor hat was bobbing over her curls as she skipped. She had on a blue flouncy dress and the long white stockings and Mary Jane she loved to wear. Elsie! Elsie, darling! Why didn't they stop? They walked right on as if I hadn't spoken. Nurse! They turned the corner then out of my sight. I began to run. Do you hear me? Stop, Mrs. Curran. I want to talk to you. Why, whatever is the matter, Mrs. Wells? Where's Elsie? Elsie? Yes, my daughter. I saw you walking down the hall with her, and then you turned this corner, and now she's gone. Where is she? I assure you, Mrs. Wells, I was with no one. As a matter of fact, I... I didn't know you have a daughter. Oh. Well. I haven't anymore. She was drowned with her father 20 years ago. I knew I had to be more cautious after that. For if Nurse Curran ever suspected, she'd tell the doctor. And I'd seen enough of those walls when I was a girl. Well, how are you, Sybil? How does it feel to be downstairs for dinner? Oh, if you're ready to eat, I'll start serving. Why, Mrs. Curran, you needn't do that. Where's... Mary. Well, there wasn't much for her to do with you ill, Mrs. Wells, so when she asked to visit her sister for a few weeks, I, I didn't want to disturb you with details. Oh, I see. that. That's all right, Mrs. Curran. Then I'll get the soup. Sybil, I've been worried about you. Worried? Really? You're not recuperating as quickly as you should. And, well, Curran's been telling me things Yes, that... yes. What has she said? Oh, nothing much, really, but... Perhaps you're a bit more ill than we thought. No, she had noticed. I must be careful, very careful. Whatever happens, I must never let them send me there. I said, will you have your soup, Mrs. Wells? Oh, 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 yes, yes, please. Mm. And you, Doctor? Yes, I do. I took my first spoonful and could barely swallow it. The soup tasted far too salty. I was about to remark as much to the doctor when he said... Delicious soup, Sybil. Delicious. Oh, uh, of course, George. Of course. Sybil, what's wrong? 
You hardly touched a thing all through dinner. Well, I guess I'm just not very hungry. Salt. Everything tasted of salt. First my sight, then my hearing, and now even this sense of playing me false. How long could I go on hiding what was happening to me? I think I should have resigned myself to insanity. If the very next afternoon I hadn't wakened early from my nap. I wanted some warm milk and when Mrs. Curran didn't answer my ring, I went down to the kitchen myself. Nurse Curran, is that you? Oh, it was a child. A little blonde girl who greatly resembled my daughter. She was playing with a toy tea set. Mother isn't here right now. She's gone to the village for some groceries. Would you like to have tea with me? It's only make-believe, of course. Mrs. Curran is your mother? Yes, I'm Jean. She never told me she had a daughter, nor that the child was living in my house with her. Here's your tea, sugar or cream? <laughs> oh, I forgot. You only take salt in your food. I only take salt. What do you mean, dear? I, I don't quite understand. Oh, my mother explained to me. I asked her why she put so much salt in everything she brought you to eat last night. And that's what she said, that you only take salt in Jeannie, your food. Jeannie, Jeannie, are you sure of that? Yes, of course. I know who you are. You're Mrs. Wells, the funny lady we had to play a game with. What kind of a game, Jeannie? Well, dressing me in those funny clothes Mother found in the attic. Not looking around when you called to us. And then, when we turned the corner, I had to pop right into the linen closet and not make a sound until Mother called. <laughs> it was like hide and seek. Only you didn't find me. had been a hideous, twisted parody of hide and seek. But at last I knew I was not going mad. I had been terrified, blundering in the dark against an unknown opponent. But the game was clear to me now, and the rules, and the tricks, and most vital of all, my foe. Nurse Curran had tried to drive me mad, was still trying, but I could fight her. I had to fight her, for the sake of my sanity. Now, Jeannie, listen to me. Your mother mustn't know I was down here talking to you. Why, Mrs. Wells? Why shouldn't I tell her? Why, Mrs. Wells? Why shouldn't I tell her? Well, it, it's a game, Jeannie. It, it's like that hide-and-seek we played, remember? Please, please promise you won't say anything about my seeing you this afternoon. I, I promise. I promise, Mrs. Wells. <laughs> I needed patience now. I'm coming. Mrs. Curran was trying to destroy my reason. I couldn't let her succeed. But I needed definite evidence. And then one day, a letter came. A letter? From me, Mrs. Curran? Yes, it's postmarked New York City. Well, now, who would be writing me from there? It's from my brother, Frank. He's coming to see me and bringing a friend of his along. Someone who can help me, he says. When does he arrive, Mrs. Wells? Uh, on the 24th, the 3.30 train. Well, he didn't give you much warning. That's today, you know. I wonder why he's coming. You're, you're his sister and you're ill. What better reason? Frank and I have always loathed each other. He's not traveling all this way for affection's sake. It might be nice if I let the train. Well, if you think he'd appreciate it, you're very much mistaken. By the time you get there, he'll probably have chartered the most expensive car in town anyway. Frank's a spendthrift and a wastrel. He ran through his share of my father's estate before Daddy was cold in his grave. Just the same, it would be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it, Mrs. Weld? Well, you... You know where the car keys are if you insist on being polite. 
Go ahead and meet him. Uh, yes? Uh, special delivery for Mrs. Agnes Curran. Uh, that's your nurse, ain't it, Miss Wells? Oh, yes, it is. I'll take it, Postman. She's not in right now. I'm awfully sorry this is late, ma'am. But you see, one of our sorters put it in the regular mail route bag, and I only just discovered it. Oh, I don't suppose there's any great harm done. Oh, well, thank you. I hope not. <laughs> well, good, good, goodbye, ma'am. Goodbye. I shut the door quickly and stood turning the letter over in my hand. For I had suddenly recognized the writing on the envelope. It was Frank. And how could he know the name of my private nurse unless they knew each other? George hadn't corresponded with him, I was sure. He was aware of the hatred between us. I quickly ripped the envelope. Dear Agnes, just a line to let you know of Jean's safe arrival. I think your fears that Sybil saw her and suspects you are groundless. But perhaps it is safest this way. I feel sure that by this time, my dear sister has passed, or at any rate is near, the breaking point. I'm coming down next Thursday and will bring a specialist with me. I am certain that when she tells him of her hallucinations, shall we call them, he will have no hesitancy in declaring her insane. There it was. The whole fiendish scene. I held all the proof I needed right in my hand. I called George and asked him to come over as quickly as he could. And then I barely got enough stairs when I heard the front door open. Sarah! Sarah! Please, Mr. Courtney, she may have fallen asleep. She's still rather weak, you know. Of course. I uh, understand. If you and Dr. Randall make yourself comfortable, I'll go upstairs and see how she is. Splendid idea, nurse. Uh, Mrs. Kern, wasn't it? Yes, sir. If only George would come. Now the showdown was at hand, I was frightened. The nearer she came, the more frantically my heart beat. These next few minutes would decide so much for me. And I was alone. I felt sick with terror at having to face Mrs. Curran without George's comforting presence to reassure me. To make me know that everything would be all right. Because if I played my hand wrong now, if I couldn't convince the specialist of my sanity, I might never spend another night in the Oh, I'm sorry. Did I startle you, Mrs. Wells? Well, I... I didn't hear you come in. Your brother and Dr. Randall are in the parlor. Oh, uh, yes. Well, don't you want to come down and see them? We're not leaving this room just yet, Nurse Curran. Not until we settle a few things. But I... I don't understand. Is... Is there anything wrong, Mrs. Wells? No... I'm just curious. Where did you have that trick newspaper printed? What? And how did you manage the music that night? Was it a phonograph record played from your room directly into the ventilator? I, I don't get what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. I've known for almost a week what you were up to, young lady. But I wasn't sure just why you were doing it or who was behind you. I am now. You're, you're crazy. I felt it all along. You're mad. Oh, no, my dear. That was your aim, but you didn't succeed. You see this letter? The same stationery as the one I received today. The same handwriting, too. But this was written to you, Mrs. Curran. Fortunately, it wasn't delivered till after you'd left the house. Give me that. Oh, no. No. You'll have to kill me to get that. And I'd rather be dead than be in an institution. And we wouldn't want too loud a scene with that specialist downstairs, would we? He's not in my brother's pay, is he? No. All right. You win. I was working for Frank. He promised me a share in the estate. Why, I can't believe it. I simply can't believe it. George. Oh, thank heaven. Now, I now, now, Sybil, don't cry. You know, she almost had me fooled, Sybil. Well, here's the proof, George. A letter that Frank wrote to her. Hmm. Dear Agnes... Coming down next Thursday, declaring her insane. <laughs> Sybil, you'd better go downstairs and bring Dr. Randall and your precious brother up here immediately. 
ten minutes before. I'd run down these steps, an old woman. But everything was different now. The shadow had been lifted. I was free again. Well, well. My dear sister, Sybil. Don't you dare sister me, Frank. Why, Sybil, and here I brought Dr. Randall all this way to see you. To see me, indeed. To declare me insane so you could get your foul claws on the rest of Father's money. Sybil, what are you saying? I uh, don't think I understand, Mrs. Wells. She's... I told you she was... Mad? Insane? Yes, I'm sure you did. And it's no fault of yours that I'm not. Dr. Randall, a few weeks ago I was very ill. My brother took advantage of that by planting Nurse Curran with me. She took all her orders from him, and those orders were to drive me insane. Oh, why, I, I never heard of such a thing. I, I hadn't realized she was quite so badly off as this, Randall. Oh, there's no use your blustering anymore, Frank. George Adams has written proof upstairs. The letter you sent Mrs. Curran... Why, why I, I never wrote her my whole life. I never met the girl till today. Suppose we go and see what this is all about. Well, Courtney... Oh, of course. As you say, Doctor. Frank's face was gray. Perspiration beaded his brow as we went back up to my bedroom. George and Mrs. Kern were standing by the window quietly when I opened the door. Here they are, George. Yes. Thank you, Sybil. Well... Aren't you going to show Dr. Randall the letter? What letter, Sybil? The one Frank wrote Mrs. Curran. The one there I... There isn't any letter, Sybil. But I gave it to you just before I went downstairs. Mrs. Wells I... told me she had definite proof that Mr. Courtney was planning to railroad her. Ah, it's terrible how convincing they can be. Isn't it, Randall? How very convincing. I see. George! George! I could hardly bear to recognize those first signs, Dr. Randall. I've known oh. something for 30 years. He was very dear to me. What did you do with it? Is it burned or torn into little pieces in your pocket, George? Where's that letter? But I'm too much of a physician oh. to blind myself to facts. She'll be happier. Behind those walls, George, those walls where you and Frank put my father... Come, come, Mrs. Wells. You'd better come with me. No, no, you can't believe them. They're lying. No, please. No, no. You'd better take a ride. No. It's not safe to keep her here another day. Uh, yes, I'm afraid you're right. I'll help you, Mother. We can use my car. Don't touch me, George. Don't you come near me. Get your hands off me. Adams, let her go. Oh. Keep her sight around me. Now, please, oh. Mrs. Wells, take my arm. You know, we want to do what is best for you. Dr. Randall, Dr. Randall, please, I, I swear this on my eternal soul. There was a letter. It was special delivery written by my brother Frank to Nurse Curran. I wish I could believe you, Mrs. Wells. Watch your step, Sybil. Don't be so solicitous, George. I'd rather you kill me than betray me if you have. If there were one shred of evidence on your side, Mrs. Wells... One slightest bit of proof. Oh, say, I beg your pardon, Miss Wells. I, I had to come all the way back again. I forgot to have you sign this slip on that special delivery for Mrs. Curran. Adams, give me those car keys. And turn around. We're going back into that house. I think we've got a few things to discuss. Shadows and stillness, mystery weaves a spell of strangest fascination, charging the mind with doubt and fear. For mystery is a strange companion, a living memory. In the haunting hour. 